that's too loud. Alright, so barely a month has passed since we put together the rather silent workstation PC for my office. However, rather immediately I decided that uh, quiet wasn't quiet enough. So I made up a bit of a budget and sorted fans and coolers by descending price, got myself some rather fancy NBE loop fans with these really cool impellers, the 600 RPM versions, supposedly very good fans, a Radian Tech Erebus CPU cooler, a giant monster of a thing. Uh, it's uh, just so big it barely even feels as if it needs a fan of its own since the included fan is just a tiny little thing capable of a mere whisper of air. And to top it off I got uh, an EVGA GTX 1060 uh, with an Accelero S3 cooler to replace the tiny one but uh, sadly that hasn't arrived yet so I'm going to have to live with a screamer fan on that for another week or so. The S3 seat seem to be very difficult to get your hands on around here. So, uh, since this isn't an unboxing channel, I've just taken everything out of our boxes to get it out of the way. And this is what we're left with. So we have this huge stack. This is over 100 euros worth of 600 RPM fans. And these guys are capable of spinning very slowly and chuffing considerable amount of air by just a quick test I'm quite sure they knock every other fan in the system clean out of the water as far as uh, airflow efficiency is concerned and they are very quiet indeed. Uh, the cooler gigantic waiting to be installed and we have a big tube of the Cooler Master Master Gel Maker heatsink compound to go with that. Uh, this is supposedly the best thermal compound of the market, uh, on the market, save for the fancy liquid metal ones. Uh, very good reviews this thing has gotten and it comes in a huge syringe for a decent price. So I'm hoping that's going to last me a while and we'll have a big grab bag of uh, random goodies you get with the stuff. So we have the mounting kit for the cooler, that should also be these two bags so that's going to be a joy to assemble and uh, you get uh, these baggies with rubber mounts and uh, radiator screws with the uh, fancy uh, noise blocker e-loop fan so that's a very nice touch we are going to have we are definitely rubber mounting those whenever possible and we've got a bunch of extension cords for the fans as well because as you can see they come with very tiny wires to improve cable management you just uh, shove one of these extensions in and you get one short and one long one which with each fan the short ones are just like 15 20 centimeters the long ones a bit more so we're going to try and put this in the pc i'm hoping uh, this cooler is actually going to fit properly in the vertical orientation uh, the heat pipes are rather narrow at the base so i'm hoping we're also going to be able to shove a bit more ram in uh, if this is going to fit underneath there, that's going to be a very, very, very tight fit, but uh, we'll give it a go. If this doesn't fit, I've got uh, uh, some smaller sticks, which do. And that's about it. Let's get to tearing the month-old build apart and make it better. So if you weren't around to see the original build, here's a quick recap. This is a uh, somewhat re rebuilt uh, fractal defined R5 case. Uh, which has had the power supply mount completely modified and uh, we've got three very quiet fans in the bottom with my novelty nose cones. We've got a passively cooled the GTX 750Ti and a True Spirit 120 mounted on an i7-3770. Uh, so not very modern hardware in this thing but the point is uh, to be quiet and uh, fast enough for me to do my minor video editing work on and that it that indeed it is safe for the GPU being a bit dated. Uh, so this actually worked very well. Uh, the fans in the bottom is uh, one nook to uh, something or the other uh, in the far left and uh, the two fractal design ones you get with the case to the right. Those run very quietly but the noisemakers are the two gentle typhoons chuffing on our rather pathetically undersized uh, True Spirit 120. Those guys are very light compared to the, the rest of the computer despite running at about 
two and a half three volts just barely enough to get started so that's why we have a huge Radian Tech cooler to replace them with all right and we've now dismounted our old cooler as well as our old fans and we've fit the new fans for the bottom instead very nice indeed they fit perfectly well in there despite being slightly thicker than the normal uh, PC fans so I had to actually trim down the piece of wood they're holding the power supply in place because uh, the fan just wouldn't have it anyway let's have a look at the old hardware versus the new and boy does the Radian Tech Erebus make the old True Spirit 120 look puny and insignificant that is quite pathetic so uh, there are two reasons for me choosing the Erebus cooler uh, the first is that it has very very wide thin spacing uh, compared to the True Spirit which has much tighter thin spacing there and a tight thin spacing is excellent when you have a cooler with a high pressure fan mounted to it as the true spirit is built however in a passive cooling solution that is basically useless because it takes too much force to push uh, air through the cooler so passive fans uh, sitting far away from the cooler just cannot muster the pressure to actually move air into it it'll just rather go around and not really do much and the second reason is that uh, it was uh, by far the cheapest option for a cooler of this class uh, all of the other brands were much more expensive even though they were practically identical although i think they all had slightly thicker thin spacing and most of them came with normal thickness fans so the fan you get with the Erebus is quite unique indeed uh, it's a sleeve bearing unit so I'm not really going to use it since it would be sitting horizontally but as you can see it is very 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 thin and that is because uh, it's a very low pressure fan to accommodate a very out of focus uh, wide fin spacing on the cooler You'd, there's no point having a thick Thick fan with lots of pressure on this cooler it's just going to be chuffing air uh, into nothing however I am considering mounting my fourth and final e-loop fan onto the Erebus because uh, we've got one spare I ordered for even though you can obviously only mount three in the bottom so these fans uh, seem to be of very very high quality like just the feel of them they may it just instills confidence they are have some rather fancy pointless wanky designs on them which are there we go in focus uh, and some rubber pads as well now these pads uh, uh, white pads actually do uh, offer support if you put the fan down on the table it's actually resting on the pads there and if you mount this onto a radiator or something it's gonna uh, mount onto the pads as well uh, they also seem to provide some uh, sound dampening much like the little pieces of asphalt I mounted onto my gentle typhoons in the past video about this build because if you knock this fan it is very very well dampened compared to uh, basically any other fan like if I knock that and if we just uh, grab a random 120mm this knock to you it's going to be one of the better ones but still well that one's actually excellent as well let's grab a cheaper one well, that's a Corsair That just rattles and makes a high-pitched noise, whereas this is very well dampened, and indeed the Noctua was as well. So, uh, ready to install the Airbus CPU cooler. Uh, it's uh, rather straightforward. You just mount the backing plate onto your main board, and you put your mains on top. The instructions are clear and nice and concise. Uh, I chose to install this thing to help guide the spacing of these guys, because there are no indents on the metal pieces so they will go on wonky unless you space them properly although it's not very critical I also did end up installing 16 gigs of RAM because the Erebus actually despite being a much larger cooler than the true spirit actually has higher clearance 
so you can fit larger RAM underneath it and that also works when you mount it uh, the other way around as I'm, I'm going to do compared to your normal mounting scheme we have airflow going from the front to the back I'm going to have airflow going upwards which means mounting the cooler 90 degrees opposite to how you'd normally do it uh, so that was a very nice surprise the uh, true spirit actually has an issue where the width of the heat, heat pipes is actually very wide so they would strike the RAM whereas they, that is actually more narrow on the Airbus that's a very very nice touch I love that so uh, with no further ado let's get that cooler installed and power up alright so let's give the PC building no it alls something to whine over let's just put a big gob of thermal compound right there that's good enough for me peel the sticker pretty decent finish on that perhaps a bit coarse but it seems to be intentionally coarse so a good thing we put a lot of thermal compound on there and on she goes now it's a very nice thought by Rajin Tech to supply this uh, long screwdriver for mounting the screw that's down through this massive hole in the middle of the cooler because the most normal screwdrivers just don't reach, that's uh, 15 centimeters down. However, it uh, actually doesn't quite fit the supplied screws, like it's a Phillips 3 and the screws are Phillips 2. So uh, I'm just going to use my own long ass screwdriver to do the job. And that's it tartened down and this actually sits very very well. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the mounting design which has the crossbar going like that. They tend to be a bit rickety but in this case it's actually uh, basically a part of a PCB. This has uh, no play in it whatsoever. So I'm very happy to see that. Now let's see if we can perhaps mount our final NB E loop fan onto this cooler and run this at like ridiculously low speed just to give it a bit more chuff. This fan should be quite enough, but it doesn't matter that this one is slightly higher to the case than the bottom fans. I, I think this is going to be quite enough. Well, uh, never mind that actually, because uh, the included uh, rubber mains only fit the original fan, which has uh, fan holes which are rather. Oh, that's more like a 120 by 120 millimeter pattern or something uh, and in order to fit a more normal uh, 140 millimeter fan you have to use these ridiculous metal hooks to just kind of hook it in place and I'm not gonna do that because that's annoying as all hell so I think I'm just going to see how this performs entirely passively to start and we need to consider it to uh, didn't work passively before, but that's because our heatsink was tiny and not optimized for passive cooling. Whereas this one's got uh, more than three times the thin area and uh, is just way more optimized for the application. So I think with all the area mods are done to the case, uh, we're going to be fine. All right, so I've got everything put together, together now, save for the wooden side panel, and I've got my old passively cool graphics card installed and I've clipped my microphone to the graphics card so let's press the power button and see what happens now that is properly noise free operation let's see if it can handle the, ter the thermals with no CPU fan at all just feeling the amount of flow coming through these guys which I have installed on separate fan controllers so we have individual control over these two guys while the front fan is stuck at 5 volts straight from the power supply just because it doesn't need to do more than breathe of a PSU so let's uh, rev up Fermark and see if it works fingers crossed I, I, I'm positive I think it's going to be fine and it turns out I was almost wrong kind of just managing it all the temperatures have stabilized but uh, I think something just went wrong well that's also a fan mount 
That's absolutely horrible. <laughs> but it's the only way it'll fit without it screwing up my RAM. Well, the installation of that fan did help the critical temperature issue. However, I have actually dropped my a requirement from the full almost 90 watt TDP you get when you run uh, Prime 95 at small FFTs to just running it at blend, which gives you just about 80 watts of power consumption of a CPU. And we're just about hanging in there with the CPU fan at uh, relatively low speed and the bottom uh, free fans uh, running at uh, roughly 400 RPM or so. Uh, it's our thermals are actually worse than they were before and our noise level isn't actually that much lower, uh, which has me uh, quite uh, disappointed actually with how this build has gone. Uh, however, the noise signature is uh, far better with these fans than the old Gentle Typhoon since they uh, have more of a, a rather a rumbling, airflowy, a turbulent type sound rather than the knocking motor type sound the Gentle Typhoon's had. So it is a bit of a step up, although not anywhere near as much as I had actually hoped. Uh, which, well, is sad. Alright, and many an hour later we have arrived at something serviceable. So let's have a look and see what this magnificent creation has become. So, uh, most obviously the wooden plate which was previously covering this entire side uh, has been replaced with a foam bar. Uh, the reason for that is the wooden plate was only there to accommodate the low height of the CPU and GPU heatsink. Uh, but uh, the new ones both the CPU and GPU heatsinks are considerably taller and they're almost reaching to the edge of a case, so the wooden bar internal wall is uh, no longer needed. Uh, what is needed, however, is this foam uh, stick, uh, foam bar. And what this thing does is it insulates the lower part of this, the lower part of the case here from the upper part here, and that is to prevent air to slip from these fans over the GPU heatsink, which has a, a, a roughly one inch gap there, uh, which of, of course has much lower uh, resistance to airflow than the heatsink itself, and any air that passes over there is wasted. So this prevents that from happening, it just lightly presses against the case side and the GPU. We also have a plastic air guide there, which is probably rather invisible, uh, which is taking about 50% of the flow from this fan and also writing that through the GPU heatsink. Uh, the other 50% is going through the paint supply there and out the top of the case, making sure the PSU doesn't overheat. Uh, and the most notable change for this operation is that we have uh, uncovered the rear panel here. And uh, this now has an air filter installed uh, which is not real removable, I'll just vacuum it off. And we have a CPU fan properly mounted to the heatsink and chuffing air through it from behind. Uh, we also have this air guide here, which is taking some of the air from just for low pressure zone in general and basically giving it a hint of a shove back in that direction, and that is because this heatsink on top runs really, really hot, and there really is, by the ATX standard, if, you, if you're if you going for a vertical airflow solution, there's a dead zone here, like there's very little airflow there, and there's not much you can do, uh, say for adding more fans. I actually uh, was experimenting quite a bit adding this uh, low pressure, low noise knock to a fan in kind of different uh, directions here, but uh, no matter what I did, this thing only made temperatures worse. Even if I had it sucking air there, leaving these PCI slots uncovered, even the extra airflow going that way just raised the temps. So uh, it seems that uh, the temperature of this heatsink is just high enough for it to actually draw a fair bit of convection uh, on its own when the GPU is loaded down for it to uh, cool itself quite well. Uh, although this uh, air guide here does make uh, about a one degree difference 
I've spent way too many hours firmly testing this uh, by just kind of providing a slight airflow in that direction, pushing the air away and giving some uh, just air exchange in this area because, uh, yeah, graphics card in the way, not a lot of airflow is going to get there otherwise. So the temperatures we're seeing uh, in this system when everything is fully loaded down is about 75 degrees on the GPU and that is with uh, the GPU power limit raised to the maximum of 116% and a slight 150 megahertz overclock on both the GPU and the memory. And the 4.1 gigahertz i7 3770 is uh, running at uh, just barely shy of 90 degrees if you're loading that and the GPU down uh, fully with Fermark and Prime95 giving this a power dissipation of about uh, just over 80 watts. Uh, that's such an unrealistic load scenario that I don't mind it. If I just use, for instance, 8064 with its uh, CPU test, we end up at about 60 watts, which is a much more reasonable power consumption for the CPU, and then the temps are no problem there in the 70s. So this has turned out quite well, actually. I'm rather happy with the performance and uh, this system really is running very quietly. The speed of these two fans has been tuned to about 300 RPM and they are not controlled. Uh, this one is uh, going straight from the 5 volt rail on the power supply just to make sure the power supply is always getting cooling even if the motherboard has some failure and uh, it's turned those fans off. And I have actually re-enabled uh, fan control on the CPU uh, because basically I need to have this fan spinning at its maximum, almost its maximum speed of about 500 RPM all the time in order to have decent thermal performance. Uh, but with the fan control enabled, I can have it tuned to basically max out at that and uh, it'll go down to about 200 RPM when sitting idle. And uh, these fans have such a quiet motor drive that uh, uh, you can't hear it revving up. Also, it still is connected through one of the front panel controllers, so it's uh, still got a 47 ohm resistor in series with the fan, meaning that it doesn't even have any kind of high, low impedance power source to allow it to rev up quickly, uh, making annoying low transient noises. Uh, noise wise, well, uh, the latest part of this PC. Uh, even under full load, uh, is GPU coil wine. Like uh, when I'm standing here about a meter away with a side panel off, I can only hear GPU coil wine. There's no, no other noise. Perhaps some CPU coil wine as well. But the turbulence noise from these fans is uh, uh, this is inaudible at uh, one meter with a case open. So I'm quite happy with that actually quite happy indeed, although I'm not happy with how this area has turned out because, put my hand in here, there is a big, big collection of heat just in here, even with the slight airflow this air guide is providing. But temps are okay, we are achieving a GPU overclock and the CPU is overclocked as it always has been, with manageable temperatures at all kinds of load states, even extreme ones, and uh, the PC is uh, basically dead silent. So uh, there's no, nothing to call this other than a success. Uh, the point of this whole project was to get rid of the motor noise created by these gentle typhoon fans and that we have indeed managed. And we have created a much more efficient uh, system since the case fans uh, these fancy case fans are spinning at a basically 40% slower speed than the included uh, fractal design and Noctua fans were when I started this project. So, all in all, not bad at all. So that's about it for this video. Uh, I hope you found some of this useful and at least enjoyed my silly thermal engineering. So I'm gonna have to thank you for watching and Make sure you enjoy yourself.